In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, and export to Excel a comparative balance sheet within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our test file, Greg's Design and Landscaping. We're going to go to the reports on the left side. We'll select the reports. We're going to start off with the balance sheet, the normal balance sheet, and then we're going to make adjustments to it to make it a comparative balance sheet. You can find that in the favorites items up top or scrolling down to the business overview looking for that balance sheet. We'll almost always be in the favorites items as well because the balance sheet is going to be one of those reports we often use. We want to make a comparison between October and November. We're going to show how to do this in two different ways. One by changing the dates and changing the totals to monthly. The other by using other options to have a previous period comparison will give the pros and cons of those two methods. We want to compare October and November, noting that normal balance sheets only have one date and just show one column of information. So how do we get two columns of information? We're going to think about, well, how did QuickBooks figure out to do that in a simple report? What would be the best way to do that? If you can think through why QuickBooks would set it up the way they set it up, it's easier to go in and say, okay, I, I see how this is working. So how would QuickBooks set up a balance sheet and then have the option of having a comparative balance sheet very easily? Well, one way we could do it is say, how about we have a range from the dates for the full range we want, October and November, and then uh, and then use some function to tell QuickBooks that we want a comparison between the two months. So in other words, we're going to say we want as of uh, 10.01.18, October 1st, 2018, and 11.30.18. So October uh, through November 30th, 2018. We'll go ahead and run that report as is now. And we'll see what happens is we just get one row of numbers there. It doesn't, the, the date range didn't matter at all. Why do we even have a date range? Because at the end of the date, it's, it's the only going to see November 30th. That's all we see at the end of the date range. However, if we choose this option over here, the totals, and we make it monthly. So we want to see months and then run that report. We'll then see a comparison. Now that's telling QuickBooks, hey, I want you to break out in a components of months. And what that means for a balance sheet is as of the end of the month. So now we have two items here. This says October. It may as well say October uh, 31st, the end of the month. This may as well say November 30th, the end of the month, because that's what a balance sheet is. So now we, this is one way we can have this comparison. October, November, you'll see that it is going to show October and then November. We're going to run another comparison, which is probably more useful for most purposes and in this comparison we can compare different kind of months previous months and we can also have a subtraction column to to subtract out the months so there's pros and cons to each method uh, having this range method allows us to compare more than just two months we can compare multiple months which is nice or multiple years which is nice but if we just want a comparison between two periods and the change of those two periods then we'll do a different method and that's one we'll we'll stick with and work with so I'm going to put this back to totals then, total only, and choose the second method. And we're going to say, well, how would QuickBooks do this in another way? Well, like we could say, let's give the first date of, of the first range that we want and then tell QuickBooks to do the same for the previous range, previous time period. So in order to do that, we would have to say, okay, I want to, I want to show my starting point for the month of November, meaning, meaning the whole month. So I'm going to start at... Uh, November 1st, 2018, 11 1, 2018, and we'll run that report just to see what we have, and that'll give us the totals. Now we want to tell QuickBooks is going to say, tell me what you want in terms of the previous period, and then it'll it'll give us the previous period. To do that, we're going to go to uh, the select period item. We're going to go to previous period, and then run that report. Once we do that, now we have the previous period, a similar comparison that we had before. However, now the current month is first and the previous month is second. So we read it from current to prior, not in chronological order. Then we can also have other comparisons. This is why this method when comparing only two time periods is probably better because we're probably going to want, for example, if we select the previous period, the dollar change. 
So I'm gonna say, yeah, I want the dollar change, run that report. And there we have the dollar change. So here's the checking account minus the checking account uh, of the prior period. And here's the change all the way through. That's useful, that's useful to have. It's useful for our purposes. However, it's not useful really for us to benchmark with other companies. If we wanna benchmark to other companies, especially those larger or smaller, but in the same industry, having the dollar change doesn't necessarily help us to do that. A percentage change, however, would. And therefore, if we select the drop down and we do the percentage change and then run that report, we get that percentage column. Also very useful thing to have. If we see these percentages, they can give us another just visual statistic. Just It's just basically a statistic. We want to basically combine as many of these statistics together to give a picture. All these things are just giving little pieces of the full picture. If we look at these things, we can get a better idea of the full picture. This statistic then, or this percentage, is really going to be the change, current year minus the prior year, divided by the prior year. So we'll say the 208.01 change, in this case, divided by the prior year, 2000 and, uh, I'm sorry, October, divided by 158.08. And that gives us, if I move the decimal point over, 131.59 about. That's gonna be the percentage change. And these percentages, this percentage change, it's really something that a lot of people don't know, but kind of should, because it's used all the time. If we wanna measure anything that, that we're comparing things that have a different amount, but they're comparable items like batting averages or like if we have to, how many people are in a student, how many uh, students are in a classroom, we have to use percentages to do, the, to do so. What's, what's our attendance rate in a 30-person class versus a 15-person class? We got to use statistics. If we're trying to compare data between salespeople and whatnot who've, who've done a different amount of calls, have spent different time in the office, one person's part-time, one person's basically full-time, how can we compare those their performance, we have to do a similar kind of ratio analysis. So it's really, really useful to, to do these things. The, the utility of it happens a lot. And as one, one way you can kind of check it out and practice with it is with QuickBooks. Now that we've made this change, note that the heading doesn't quite make sense anymore because we have basically a comparative balance sheet now. It's not just the balance sheet. So we might want to change the name then. And we're going to select this little pencil item to do that. We'll keep the name of the company. We'll change this not just to the balance sheet, but to a comparative balance sheet. So I pasted that in there, but comparative balance sheet. So then we have that information, which is nice. We can also make some adjustments to the formatting of this. Remember that if we print this, when we print this, we select the print item and scroll down to the bottom of this guy. Then we see that we have this date and time stamp again. We could remove that. We're going to go into the customize up top. So we'll go into the customize reports and we want to go to the header and footer in order to remove that. We're going to remove the footer, in this case, date prepared. We'll uncheck that time prepared and reports basis. And then we'll say run that report again. We always have to update the report, run the report. Then if we go back to the print screen, scroll back down through it, it should be gone. It's no longer there. So that is nice. I'm going to close this back out. It's also the case that we may want to remove the pennies, the cents. That, that might be something that we don't necessarily need all the time. Uh, and therefore, we can remove those. In other words, it might be immaterial to decision making. And it might be easier to, to process and view this information for others without the, the cents in it. And anything we can do to make the numbers a little bit easier for uh, representation, if it's not taking away any value in, for the analysis and for decision making probably a good thing to do so we will go back up to the customize and to do that and we're it's going to be in the general area and then we're going to remove the sense so we'll move the sense it still makes sense but it's going to be removing the sense meaning the pennies no change involved in it so we'll say okay. and then the other thing that's useful that many people like to do that th this negative sign up top may not be easy to see so if we have a negative number sometimes it might be easier to see the bracketed numbers as negative. Many people prefer that. It might be stand out more within the statement. So we'll show bracketed numbers. If you want to make them red too, you can also do that. So negative numbers will be bracketed and red and really stand out. So you can, a couple changes to, based on preferences that you can choose. So there we have that. We see those negative numbers. 
These are also just those kind of little touches that can distinguish the reports that we're running possibly from other people and other reports as well. So we'll scroll through this. Here's what we have so far. And then we're going to practice printing this out and we're going to save it and export it to Excel. And then we'll also save it as a PDF file just to practice those as we generate these reports. So to print it, first we're going to print it as a PDF file. And I'm going to practice using the Qt PDF printer to do that. I have a PDF printer set up. You could save it as a PDF, but I would get in the, in the practice of recommending getting in the practice of using a Qt PDF printer, some type of PDF printer, because it's useful here and in many other places. Looks like it's good in the layout, meaning it, it all fits on one page wide. So we're going to go ahead and print it. Note we have some other options up here. We could have the download option as well, but I'm going to go ahead and use the printer just to practice that PDF printer. Note we have the cute PDF printer here that we're going to use. This is a, a free PDF printer. I, I recommend getting used to using this for here and other type of areas, anywhere, anywhere you need to print something to a PDF where you have a printer, but possibly not that option to save as a PDF. We'll print that out. We also want to practice formatting and saying where are we going to put this information. This is one of the main things we have to do is just sorting information, sorting reports. We have to give it to somebody. We have to either give it to ourselves in the future or we're going to have to give it to a supervisor or a client. We want to make sure that we sort it in a way that's recognizable and easy to give to somebody else. So we're going to put this in uh, Get Great Guitars and I'm just going to call it Section 2. For, for this purpose is, of course, if we were to be working with a client or something like that, we would want to save it possibly by client and then by date. So just be aware of whatever sorting process we have. Here, of course, we're sorting it in kind of a class basis and, and sorting that information. But sorting early helps a lot later on. So we're just going to put this into section two and we're going to call this a comparative balance sheet. So we'll say it's a comparative balance sheet and we're going to say 11318 we'll keep it at the end date so we'll say all right and save that information there we have that i'm going to close this back out and i'm going to export it to excel too so we're going to practice doing that for a couple different re reasons we want to format it a little differently and practice just putting together multiple worksheets that we can then give to somebody so we're going to export it to excel and i'm going to go ahead and open within excel so we're going to say okay note i'm currently using uh, firefox rather than chrome just to show different browsers here it looks a little bit different in firefox as we do the export process so different browsers will look of course a little bit different as we uh, export to excel here we have it in excel it's nice to be able to just check the formatting but i usually do that by going to the page layout tab this will show us if it fits on one page or not. And we're really typically worried about does it fit on one page wide? In this case, it does not. The change is over on the second page. So if we scroll down, that's a problem. That's not good. If we print this out, it's going to be pretty bad. So how can we fix that? We're going to go back to the normal view. And you'll note now that it keeps this little dotted line so we can see that's the page break that we have. One way, to, the typical way to fix this is to change the orientation. So if we go to the page layout up top, and we change in the page setup group the orientation to landscape that's one way we can change it that's that's really useful in terms of printing just note that if you plan on printing a lot of reports however having some portrait and some landscape you got to think then okay how am i going to organize this report if we print them and staple it together because you know you got different ways you want to set the landscape items within the portrait items so you might say that's not an option i don't want to do that because I want to keep all everything portrait in this group of documents. If that's the case, then you could go back to, to portrait and you can try to adjust the columns. Note that this column here, this first column, has some room. So you would think that we can go right between these two and maybe make this a little bit smaller. If you double click on it, it should it should then minimize the column to, to the to what it needs to be. And then of course, once you get it past that line on one page then you're good that should be it we'll keep it there so we have that and note the formulas are here too if we need any adjustments of course you have different type of form formatting options within excel you have a vast variety of formatting options within excel once you get it to this this point so uh, then we're going to go ahead and save this i'm going to go say file save as 
I'm going to go to browse and we're going to put this on the desktop as well under that get great guitars folder. We'll put this into get great guitars section two and then I, I'm going to call it once again a balance sheet or a comparative balance sheet. Same name but it's going to be a different file type. Save that. Now we have our information over here in our folder. We can open that up. We're in section two and here is our comparative balance sheet in PDF format. We're going to close that back up. Here it is in Excel. So we have the Excel format and then we can choose how we want to basically format that information to send it to others. The last thing we might want to do with this report is to save it or memorize it. So if we're going to run a comparative balance sheet often, we may want to save this format so we don't have to keep changing the subtitle and changing the text, for example, and possibly just need to change basically the dates. To do that, we can save and customize. So we want to save and customize up top. And we'll get into how to, how to save to a different group or setting up groups at a later time. At now, we're just going to say that that's going to be a comparative balance sheet. We will memorize the name of the reports and go ahead and save that. And then the customer report saved successfully. Then if we go down to reports and we want to look at this information, create this report or a similar one with different date ranges, we can go to the custom reports tab and take a look at the custom report that we have just created. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.